So a state's ban on the future purchase and possession of body armor, along with a body armor registry, is now moving forward. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump in this video, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, which is Lear Capital. Last year was a terrible year for most investors, and 2023 could be even worse with the talk of a bad recession coming. The one thing that has always remained true among human history is the value of gold, silver, and precious metals. There are a ton of good gold companies that you could choose from, but Lear Capital has earned my business because of their 25 years of experience, their thousands of five-star reviews, and also their risk-free 24-hour money-back guarantee. So if you're interested in investing in gold, I recommend you check out Lear Capital. You can visit them by calling 1-800-920-8388, or you can go to learscholar.com and you can start buying gold today. As I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we'll be discussing a bill introduced in the state of Illinois, which aims to ban the purchase and sale of body armor, including ballistic style helmets. This bill will also create a registry of those people in current possession of body armor. The bill we will be discussing in this video is HB 3238. The goal of this bill is to make it unlawful to buy, sell, or transfer body armor, plates, or ballistic helmets in the future after this bill goes into effect. Ultimately, Illinois wants to make it a crime for a civilian to buy body armor or for someone to sell that body armor to that person. This is similar to what California initially introduced with their body armor ban, which was AB 92. Luckily, there was significant opposition to AB 92 in the state of California, which then forced the California state legislator to go in and amend that bill so that it removed the civilian body armor ban. In California, that bill was changed so that in California, it may only impact prohibited people from purchasing and possessing body armor. Essentially, the change of that bill makes it so that a prohibited person will now also be prohibited from purchasing or possessing body armor in a similar way that they are prohibited from purchasing or possessing firearms. Now, although the California body armor bill got modified, the bill in Illinois, which is similar and a little bit further in its reach, is still moving forward as a general law that restricts those individuals in the state who are residents from purchasing and possessing body armor. The summary of this bill states that with certain exceptions, it is unlawful for any person within the state to knowingly manufacture, deliver, sell, import, or purchase, or cause to be manufactured, delivered, sold, imported, or purchased by another, any armor plate, body armor, or military helmet. So that is the general goal of this bill. The bill aims to ban the future manufacture, sale, importation, or possession of various forms of body armor. The primary goal of this bill is preventing average law-abiding people from having body armor. This bill also states that with certain exceptions beginning on January 1st of 2024, it is unlawful for any person within the state to knowingly possess an armor plate, body armor, or military helmet. So through this bill, they also include a grandfather provision for these items. This bill states that if you possess those items prior to the bill going to effect, you can essentially keep possession of those items. However, there is a huge catch included in this bill. To keep the lawful possession of those items, you will need to submit a form to the Illinois State Police, which identifies that you are currently in possession of body armor, a plate, and a helmet or anything like that, and that you possessed it prior to the ban. This essentially is an outright attempt by the state of Illinois to create a body armor registry, and you will have only six months to notify the state of your possession of those items. The state will now have a pretty nice list of all the individuals in the state of Illinois who are in possession of these types of items. Also, you will still not be able to purchase any new plates or helmets going forward. Instead, you will simply only be able to keep possession of those items that you had prior to this ban. So you are still subject to the prospective ban or the future ban on body armor. Yes, you can have these grandfathered items, but as we all know, these items don't last forever. Some of them do have expiration dates. So when you want to go purchase something new, you will be prohibited from purchasing any new body armor. But even your possession of grandfathered body armor comes with a catch. The bill limits the manner in which you can use those items. It states a person shall possess these grandfathered items only 
A, on private property owned or immediately controlled by the person, or B, on private property that is not open to the public with the express permission of the person who owns or immediately controls such property. That means you can only lawfully have those items in your own home or on private property if you have the permission of that owner. Your possession and use of these items is not legal everywhere. It's only limited to those specific situations. And a violation of this bill will be a class A misdemeanor for the first offense, and then a class four felony for any subsequent offense. Now, however, with all this big surprise, there are going to be some individuals who are exempt from this bill. The individuals that are exempt from the bill include police officers, peace officers, qualified law enforcement officers, retired officers, wardens, correctional officers, members of the military, and then also companies that have security officers or security guards, things of that nature. Pretty typical of the anti-gun agenda to then exempt law enforcement officers and those groups of people so that they don't receive opposition from law enforcement. Now, some may think that a body armor ban does not implicate the Second Amendment. To that, I would say you are absolutely wrong. The Second Amendment does not just protect firearms from the government's overreach. The Second Amendment recognizes that an individual has a right to self-protection, and that protection includes protection against tyrannical threats, both foreign and domestic. The term arms in the Second Amendment includes all items, all arms that are in common use by law-abiding people for lawful purposes. That includes defensive arms or defensive tools like body armor. In the Supreme Court case Caetano, the Supreme Court held that the Second Amendment extends to all instruments that constitute bearable arms, even those that were not in existence at the time of the founding. There in that case, the Supreme Court found that 200,000 stun guns in possession in the entire U.S., was sufficient enough to find that they were in fact in common use. And based on this, I would argue that there are significantly more people in possession of body armor, plates, plate carriers, ballistic helmets, than there are people in possession of stun guns. Furthermore, the Supreme Court in Heller found that arms covered by the Second Amendment include anything that a man wears for his defense or takes into his hands. So under the text, history, and tradition of the Second Amendment, body armor is a protected arm and a ban on their purchase and sale is clearly unconstitutional. But the state of Illinois has now joined the effort to create a statewide ban on the purchase and possession of body armor, and they are targeting just the average common residents within the state, and they are exempting law enforcement officers. Now, again, some people may not think a prospective ban is that bad because they have grandfathering in there, but I just wanna remind you, we've seen stuff like this happen before, like in the state of California with magazine bans, they always grandfather something in, win over hearts and minds, and then down the road, they will go in to try to also get rid of those grandfathered items saying that they need to close the loophole. So don't fall for that trick. That's the classic anti-gun kind of trick that they try to do with prospective bans. I also suspect that the recent incident in Nashville will maybe further stoke some of the fire uh, for body armor bans. So keep an eye on this. It may get a greater push in your state and in other states as well. And we need to support states like Illinois because once a state like Illinois passes a body armor ban, it's only a matter of time before it passes to other states. Uh, California right now, we halted it with AB 92, but they could always reintroduce it. And as we know, once one state passes it, it spreads all over the place. And it's only a matter of time before they try to introduce a national ban. So again, contact your representatives and let them know you oppose this bill. And if we get any more information, I will let you all know. Also, if you like this video and you like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. As always, I wanna thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and never forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.